My name is Laura Jarvis, if you all don't know, and um, I worked here at Rainbow Gardens for a very long time, and now I have uh, expanded into growing butterfly plants and um, working at our habitat. We started out with a, a little butterfly garden, my husband and I, and we pulled out our tropical plants like hibiscus and things like that. And we got real serious and we decided we were going to just do butterfly plants. And so we have been busy for about the last 15, 16 years transforming our um, gardens into a butterfly habitat and which is really neat we just started out with a butterfly garden and I back then I had a lot of trouble getting information you know I wanted to know these host plants I wanted to know what the butterflies and the caterpillars looked like and I would search and um, they didn't have the information that they do now and so I started compiling stuff so that's kind of how it has morphed over the years is all the things that I was struggling with finding um, the plants I started growing by seeds and I started planting them out in our habitat and then I would have leftovers so I'd bring them up here and people seem to be interested so we would sell them up here so over the years it just has kind of morphed and so my um, my mission basically is to share all of that information with you all so you can skip all of that trying to find stuff and go straight into that pollinator garden and get stuff out there in in a really uh, short amount of time and actually see the results way faster than we did. So that's what I am all about these days. So, and um, I want you guys to feel free to ask questions. We're kind of a small class, so you're not gonna, you know, interrupt or slow things down. We're just gonna take it easy and hopefully I can give you all the information that you're gonna need to go forward. Um, so when I talk about the butterfly plants, they're not exclusive. I don't ever mean this is the only thing that you can use. There's a lot of other plants. When I've added to these lists, what I've done are things that we can find, things that either I grow or Rainbow Gardens can source, things that are fairly easy to grow, and things that are gonna produce results. So what I was doing was kind of reviewing our, our Pollinator 101 and then our Four Pollinator list because we're going to use that for going forward into the 102 class as, as well as you guys will be able to use that for years. So a lot of the plants that are mentioned are going to be on this list as well. There may be a few things that are not um because i'm kind of branching into some new areas but uh, for the most part these lists right here will get you a lot of butterflies and bees into your yard so um basically the 101 class was all of the easier more showy um exciting types of butterflies um, that you can more easily get. Now with that, there was only a couple of them that will actually stay. So your uh, Gulf Ritillaries will pretty much stay all season as long as you have a good supply of passion flowers. Then you, their nectar, they're really not that picky. So our goals are to have uh, activity going on in the garden at all times. So whenever you look out there, you're like, oh, look at this. Or you can take your camera out or uh, it, just sit out there and enjoy the activity. So that's the goal. Pipe vines you can get usually to stay if you have enough food where the batches will come continuously because the females and the males will know where 
the, uh, the food or host sources are. So that's how we get those butterflies in there is with our host plants. So that was an important thing that we learned in that first class. Uh, the butterflies with nectar only, they will just come and drink, feed, and then they will go. The males especially, they're just looking for females. So a little bit of, of butterfly behavior, I'm gonna go off the sheet like I always do, I can't help myself. Um, butterfly behavior is the males are always, always, always looking for the females. That's just how they are. And so if they can find a place and perch and watch, they will. They will go through an area and if they know there's a host plant there, they know the females will come. So that's what some of these uh, butterflies will do, especially our queens. You have the Greg's mist flower. The male queens, you'll notice the males almost always come first and they're gonna hang out. They're gonna just drink at the bar and have a good time and they're gonna wait for the girls to come. So once the girls come, then they're just happy guys. So that's what we want to do. We want to find our nectar plants that will feed those males. And we want to have those host plants. So the males go, aha, this is the place to be. And then the girls are going to come in because all the girls care about is making a home and family. They just want to lay those eggs. They want to just have those little caterpillars. And so that's what the, the male and female butterflies, and almost all of them are pretty much the same as far as that goes. Now with the different types of butterfly uh, varieties, there are a lot of different characteristics. So, but our goal now, especially after 101, is to get them to stay throughout the season. So have you all eliminated chemicals? Pretty much? Everybody's shaking their head, yes, excellent. That's a really, really important thing. Get a water source, it's really important, especially when it gets hot like this. Um, the bees really, really, really need that. Does the swimming pool count? Or no, because there's chemicals? Not there. really. Okay. Um, because a lot of these need to be able to safely drink. Bees, what they'll do is they'll come and they'll take the water. You'll see them drinking at the side and they'll take that back to the nest to keep the nest cool. Because when it gets up in the hundreds, um, even upper nineties, the inside of the nest heats up. And once it gets over a certain temperature, then it'll kill the larva in there. So the, the hotter it gets, the harder they're gonna have to work to keep that nest cool. So it's really, really important, especially when we're going to all the different pollinators. Okay. Um, and any tips on having a water source? without um, helping the mosquito situation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If you're going to a pond or you're going to a fountain, use mosquito bits, a biologic, which means it's a, it's a little organism and it does not hurt birds. Um, I prefer not to have it where the bees are feeding, but they say it's not gonna hurt the bees. Um, I like to keep my little water source for them clean. So I use bird baths a lot of times, or I have a smaller fountain that I change out all the time, and my bees come to that area there. So, but this works really great. Um, what you wanna do with this is a, a lot of our, my host plants, I also have in pots, and they, they have saucers sometimes, and I will put the mosquito bits in all of the saucers or sometimes even underneath the, the cool shady areas where the mosquitoes like to hide. Um, I found that it kind of deters them. So we're talking about bees. Um, did you know that one out of every three bites of food, it has had to have been pollinated by bees? So that's how important it is in our lives because one third of all of our food that we eat every day has to have a bee. 
And if we don't have healthy bees out there, that means we might not have the food that we want. There are nine, the last time I checked, nine endangered species of bumblebees in the United States alone. And so us doing our part by giving them an area to feed and drink is, I think, very important um, for our immediate area, but for, you know, a, a larger scale. Um, the education we can get and pass on is very, very important. Um, I think probably most of the public don't even think about these things, but they're extremely important when we're talking about the food we eat. Bees are easy to get in the yard. So <clears throat> how do we do that? So bees like blues and purples. And um, on my four pollinator list, there are a list of bee plants, but I also have some here. And uh, lavender is actually very good. And I don't know about you, but I really love lavender. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, bees love lavender. Um, something that I don't have on any of the lists or in the butterfly garden, I thought I would mention today. And this is Mexican heather. It's a kufia. And it, uh, the bees love this plant. We always see lots and lots and lots and lots of bees on it. So this is a really great plant. It's kind of cute. It can take the heat and sun and it'll bloom all summer long and it'll make your bees happy. It might make you happy too. This is uh, Bluebeard. Bluebeard is a, a really uh, nice perennial plant. <clears throat> Years ago, before I was butterfly gardening, I used to plant the bluebeard close to my vegetable garden, so I'd bring the bees over into the vegetable area. So now I have an African blue basil. This is probably the plant we have found to be the most appreciated by all of the bees. It's a really great plant. It can get quite large and um, once it gets going, uh, it will be a circus of activity. It will have all kinds of different native bees, small bees you never saw before, our regular honey bees. Um, it'll have all of the little butterflies, like the little hair streaks and the little mini blues and, and um, now, everybody likes it. It's, it's fun. <laughs>